I'm Bob Young here with Nuts About Nets to answer the question, what is Wi-Fi congestion? Now to answer that question, I'm going to start with wired congestion in a network and then we'll take a look at wireless congestion. And I'll tell you a little secret. The first thing I'm going to do is tell you a lie. And then I'll use that lie to explain a physical principle. And at the very end of the video, I'll tell you what the lie is so you don't go away with any misconceptions. Okay, here we go. We've got a server on the board and we've got a couple of users connected to the server via a switch, standard network diagram. And at this particular time, Mike's not in the office, only Jen is here. And from the server, she's going to download a big file. And this is a modern network. It's operating at one gigabit. So we've got a thousand megabits per second or one gigabit per second data transfer speed when Jen downloads this file. So let's say the file that she wants to get is one gigabyte. There are eight bits in a byte. And so that's an eight gigabit file transfer. And so since it's a gigabit per second, it's going to take eight seconds for Jen to download that file. Now Mike comes into the office and goes to his cube and he and Jen both download a one gigabyte file at the exact same time. Well, the connection to the server is only one gigabit. And because the server treats Mike and Jen with equal priority, they're each only going to get half of the data bits out of the server. So the effective transfer rate will be 500 megabits per second for Jen and 500 megabits per second for Mike. So that's not network congestion yet, but you can see that it will take twice as long for each of them to download the file. Now if we add a whole bunch of users, this transfer speed gets to be slower and slower for each individual user, even though the speed out of the server is the same but this is now a combined data stream for several users. Can you see how this problem is going to affect us in the wireless environment? If we have several laptops, tablets, and smartphones all connected to the same access point, we'll run into a situation where we have congestion on the wireless network, and that will cause people to experience slow speeds. Even though they show a connection speed of 54 megabits per second or 108 megabits per second or 300 megabits per second or even faster with some of the newer 802.11 conventions. What will happen with too many laptops on there is we'll get network congestion. This will cause slowness. It's not the same as interference. Interference, the data bits are corrupted. With congestion, all of the data bits are there, but each user only gets a fraction of the total. I've redrawn the network so you can see the same thing with the wireless example. In this case, we've got the wireless access point connected to the switch, and so it's part of the same network. Jen and Mike have now moved to their laptops, and when they try to download files from the server, they'll have the same issue. If Jen tries to download a file by herself, then she'll have all of the available bandwidth from the wireless access point. But as soon as Mike tries to download a file at the same time as Jen, they'll each get only half of the available bandwidth. If we increase this to three or four users, life is good. But if we take this up to 20 or 25 users, they'll experience congestion that will cause them to complain about network performance. So just like a wired network, we have congestion in the wireless network. Make sure you have enough access points to provide for all of your users' data. When we want to have a lot of users on our network, we've got to put in additional access points so that we don't create congestion. Too many users, even with a perfect Wi-Fi system, you'll find that the data rate slows down to unacceptable levels. So it's important to have enough access points for all of your users so that they can communicate quickly and efficiently without congestion slowing them down. Okay, I told you I would reveal the lie, and now I've got to tell you what it is. The lie is that this diagram doesn't show anything about overhead. In, in real, real life scenarios, the one gigabit per second speed that we have here is never totally available to the user for the data transfer. So I said that a one gigabyte file would transmit in eight seconds, eight gigabits, but in actual fact, it would take about three times that long because of overhead bits that are used for synchronization, error detection, 
and session establishment. So it would never really be this fast, but it works good to make easy math so you can get the idea. Thanks so much for watching the video. We've got some other videos with helpful information about specific wireless performance issues. I hope you'll check them out.